You've tuned in to Unpause Your Life with Dr. Kelly Estes and Dr. Tara Lynn Sell. Your access to success strategies and more to help you move onward and upward with your life. Listen in each week as they interview others who have really taken their essence to the next level and truly unpause their life. Now here are your hosts, Dr. Kelly Estes and Dr. Tara Lynn Sell. Hey everyone, welcome to the show. This is Dr. Kelly Estes and I am founder of the Addictions Academy, the Addictions Coach and Rehab Rescue. Welcome to Unpause Your Life. This is a great podcast where we showcase people who have done something extraordinary with their life. I welcome you and I hope you enjoy all of our guests. On my way found a reason to wake up another day. But they needed to show You are listening to Unpause Your Life with Dr. Callie Estes of the Addictions Coach, the Addictions Academy, and my co-host, Dr. Terrilyn Sell from drterrilyn.com. Our guest today is Kathy Fedke. She's the co-CEO of Real Wealth Network and best-selling author of Retire Rich with Rentals. We're very excited to have her. She is an active real estate investor, licensed real estate agent, and former mortgage broker specializing in helping people build multi-million dollar real estate portfolios that generate passive monthly cash flow for life. Welcome, Kathy. Thank you. So I'm going to start us off with the first question. Where did you come up with this idea? <laughs> I wish I could say I planned it. <laughs> it was kind of a, a step-by-step process like most things in life. Uh, about 15 years ago, my husband was really at the top of his game. He had written a book called Extreme Success. We had just bought a like a six-bedroom house and right outside of San Francisco. We had two beautiful young children and my life was perfect. I was pretty much a stay at home mom and living the dream. And you know, he came back from his book tour and had walked in the door with tears in his eyes. I'm like, you know, what happened? He said he had gone to the doctor, you know, he had just gone to a doctor's appointment, came back and he had melanoma. And after further testing, they, they thought it had spread to his liver and told him he had six months to live. Oh my God. So life, yeah, really life yeah. Um, sends curveballs, you know, and sometimes it does come when you're at the top of your game, when everything seems great and bam, you know, something else shows up. And so it turns out that, you know, after treatment and so forth, Rich is fine and he's with us today. But at the time, I didn't know I was, a, you know, mom of two kids. I was kind of out of the work world and, and uh, you know, basically dealing with coloring books and diapers and stuff like that. So I had no idea how to take over the finances, but I knew I needed to so that he could get better. And, and so the one thing I had from my career that I kind of kept with me was a radio show in San Francisco that I did for fun. I didn't really make any money. And when I thought, okay, I'm going to leverage that and kind of do the thing that I do know how to do, which is radio. And, and I thought, I'm just going to use this platform to find out how on earth, you know, I can be a stay at home mom and make money. <laughs> you know, that's what, that's what I wanted. And so I just started interviewing people one after the other of how they created passive income. And, uh, the, the show is still here today. It's called the real wealth show and I'm still doing it, still interviewing people, finding out how they're building wealth. Awesome. So when I look at this online, uh, the thing that I'm, I'm curious with is this joining like joint funding investing. What is this all about? Mm-hmm. Sure. Well, so basically back then when I, after interviewing so many people, I discovered there's really uh, a couple of ways that wealthy people invest their money and how they make their money. And it's usually through owning a business or owning real estate. And so Rich and I, you know, kind of listened to them and, and started buying income properties, but not in California. It was too expensive. So we had to learn how to, how to identify the right places to buy and what, what kinds of things to buy and what would bring in the most cash flow again so we could have this passive income. And uh, at the time it was Texas that was booming and, uh, and California was already peaked. It was like, you know, in the mid two thousands, you know, crazy loan time and 
home prices were super high. So we just started having events where people could come and learn from pros and experts and, and basically rich people, people don't, we don't normally get to hang out with. And, uh, and we learned, Rich and I did it. We bought a bunch of properties in, in Texas. I can tell you how we did that and at the time with no money down. And that just grew this investor group. And so once we had, now we have 38,000 members and that allows us, you know, people can buy property in their own name, you know, just like any normal real estate deal. Or if they just don't want to manage it at all, they want to go that extra step of totally passive, then they can join one of our syndications, which is a group investment, and let us manage it so that they don't have to do anything. Sometimes I really wish that we were on video because I'm sitting here with my mouth open. (laughs) 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 Whoa! I'm like, Callie meet Kathy. Kathy meet Callie. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> okay, so Kathy, this is up my alley because I'm like business. That's all I'm thinking about, how to make money. I've got my hand in five different companies. I'm in. So here's my question. So I did something on a baby, baby scale completely by accident. I wanted to buy a place in Colorado. Because I'm self-employed, they want everything but blood to give you a loan. And I couldn't mm-hmm. get the loan. But I put mm-hmm. sixty grand in, teamed up with somebody who, who could do the loan. We got the house. We split the income. Is that what I'm hearing you say? Things like that? That is definitely a great way to, to do deals. I mean, it, it all starts with mindset. You've got to know that it's possible. And, and too often I just, you know, people don't even take that next step. You know, it's just like, oh, in your case, you might have said, oh, well, you know, I can't get a loan, but you didn't. And, and so that's what a lot of people do is just go, you know, they don't even bother to find out if they can even get the loan, you know, in the first place. So it starts with mindset and, and, and an open mind wanting to know, like, like me, like, how do other people do it? I know people are out there buying real estate. How are they doing it? And so I got the opportunity to interview people and find out. But today, I mean, there were no podcasts back, back then, but today there are podcasts all over the place with information on how to do this. It's no secret anymore. It used to be. So what you, what you're talking about and what you did is fantastic. It's like you decide I'm going to do this and then you find a way to do it, you know? And there's people who would love to partner who maybe have the ability to get the loan, but don't have the down payment or they have money in their self, you know, in their IRAs and think, you know, the market's kind of high. I don't know. This seems maybe it's time to move on and and they can self direct and lend to you. And be like a bank and have their money secured to a property at a low LTV. I mean, there's so many ways to go about it. You just have to have an open mind. So this is, this is so, awesome. Yeah. Cause I'm thinking like Kelly, we talk all about, about law of attraction all the time and mindset and keeping an open mind and, you know, stepping away from your fear. Right. So I know my husband and I used to own some commercial property. And we've said to ourselves, never again. Do you, do you, do you find there is a difference between like commercial property and what's the other one? Non-commercial property? People yeah. homes. Residential. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you. Residential. <laughs> I, I still have my mouth dropped down to my kneecaps at this point. <laughs> I'm like, well, I don't even know the lingo. Go ahead. <laughs> well, here's, here's the thing. And I, I do get excited about this stuff and then I have to temper myself because you can make money and you can lose money in this at the same time. You know, it's there are good deals and there's bad deals, no matter what the market, no matter what the asset class. So are there commercial properties that will suck you dry and take all your money and make bankrupt? Yes. Are there residential properties that will do that? Yes. And on the flip side, can you make money in, in all asset classes? Yes. So it just you you've got to treat it like a business and research, study, understand, network, um, or or align yourself with someone who's doing that. So again, when you were asking about group projects, hey, I've got Silicon Valley engineers who work 60 to 80 hours a week. They don't have time to do what I do. So they trust me and let me do it for them because I have a track record. But too often people will just kind of jump into something without being without really doing the homework that's needed it's like, you know, you can start a business and, and what is it? One out of, I don't know, 50% fail or something. I, or I forget. <laughs> There's like, like a big statistic. You know, a lot of people can swim, but you don't want to jump in. You don't want to dive into the deep end before you've been in the shallow part, right? <laughs> and taking lessons. Yeah. I, I, I feel like having, you know, Callie and I, we both have 
I've had 20 years of business ownership myself and, you know, we're already against the odds. So, Mm -hmm. so clearly we have something that a lot of people don't have, whether it's drive, ambition, or just mindset that Mm -hmm. this is going to work. It's, this is fascinating stuff. I love it. So Uh what's the the number one thing when you were meeting with these wealthy people, what's the best piece of advice they said? Um, I mean, at the time I, I interviewed Robert Kiyosaki in 2014, I think, and that's when he taught me that you know, there's cycles and, and to get ahead of the crowd. So generally the crowd is not educated <laughs> and so they're, you know, they're following the crowd. And, and so you just have to be ahead of it and be able to see what's coming. There really is no such thing as a park your money and, and, you know, 20 years later, just hope it all turned out. Life isn't like that anymore, but I think we want it to be. And we, we hope it will be. And we, you know, we've been kind of trained to not pay too much attention, just hand it over to your your financial planner and just let them know and don't worry about it and let it sit for 30 years and everything will be fine. And that's really the equivalent of giving birth to a child and handing it over to someone and saying, you know, give it back to me in <laughs> 20 years and I hope I hope my kid is, you know, well raised. It, it just doesn't work that way. <laughs> you got to pay attention. And your money is what will take care of you in the future. Maybe your kids will, but probably your money is what will take care of you in the future. <laughs> I'm not counting on my kids, unfortunately. <laughs> I'm counting on you, right? right. So, yeah, like you've got to pay attention, and it's not what we always hoped for, or maybe what our grandparents had, which you know, work at a company for 30 years, and there's your pension, and you're you're good. You have a wonderful retirement. It's not like that anymore. There companies don't provide that. The government doesn't provide it. You just saw, you know, you probably just saw headline news that they're finally admitting that Social Security will run out. There's not enough. There's not enough to support the aging population. That's massive. And, so you, you know, no one's going to be there for you. You got you got to figure it out and you got to do it for yourself. It's funny. I did see that on the news and I did started doing math in my head. Am I going to be around by that time? <laughs> <You know? laughs> I was doing a little calculation about that, but that yeah. that's kind of, so I, I think about that. Are, do you have any other strategies for passive income that are not real estate related or do you just primarily work in the real estate realm? Well, you know, there's so many different kinds of businesses, you know, running a business that is self-managed is a fabulous way to create cash flow. You know, if you, if you've got a good idea and you're, you have the ability to enroll people and train them and oversee them and then hire people to oversee them and, you know, let it, let it run itself. It could be as, as simple as a laundry mat, you know, a laundromat where, you know, it, there's lots of ways to create passive income. Um, even my, uh, my daughter's kind of first boyfriend is kind of adopted and we just love him, even though they broke up, we're not going <laughs> to let him go. <laughs> we love him. So, um, she thinks that's weird, but you know, <laughs> she shouldn't pick such nice people. <laughs> anyway, he, he's just, uh, you know, he wants to do real estate. He's only 21. And so he, you know what he did instead? He bought an old bus for like five grand and fixed it up. So it's like a, you can live in it. It's like an RV, which apparently millennials are into right now. They love to just sort of drive around in their car, in their, in their home. Uh, and so he, he took this old bus, fixed it up, made it into a little RV, put a few thousand into it, including solar and a little kitchen and everything, and flipped it for like 20 grand. And, and so, you know, but he got all these offers because we live in California. It's expensive. He got offers from people who are willing to pay $600 a month just to live in it. And and he bought it for 5000 you know. So, you know, there's so many different ways to create passive income. You just have to start thinking about it, looking for it, studying it, talking to people, going to the right networking groups. You, you become like the five people you hang out the most with. And and so when you look around and say, I want to change my life, then you need, and you don't like where you are, then maybe you need to add a few people into your life who are living the life that you do want. So you can learn from them. Well, Kathy, I'm going to add you into my top five. <laughs> my, my Facebook friend request is on its way. I'm telling you. Awesome. I will accept. <laughs> oh, man. It's so interesting. 
you mentioned the RV because we're doing that. We bought an, an RV. I was just going to say that, Kelly. <laughs> yeah, we bought an RV for my husband's band. And then we got the bright idea, let's live in it. We did it for a year. We both decided that living in an RV park just doesn't fit our personality. We're both city people. Mm-hmm. So mm-hmm. we're renting it out, and we're, we're getting 273 a night just to rent it. So for the whole month Are of you? July. Yeah. Oh, we were thinking about doing that, too. Are you doing Airbnb for it? Uh, yeah, it's called Outdoorsy. So the Airbnb version for RVs is Outdoorsy.com. And our first offer was for the entire month of July for 5300 bucks. And we're like, check mark. You know, there's the payment. <laughs> so And do they drive it? Yeah, yeah. They, they meet you at the location. You show them how to use it. You sign all the agreements. And then everything's done through the, through the outdoorsy. So the insurance and all that's covered. And then they take it. Oh my gosh. That's I mean, they, they take it out of the RV park. Yes. So oh God, yeah, they take the first Shush time going to, he's going to Wisconsin. He's coming up to your direction. Well, crap. I've got a fifth wheel. I think I need to start doing that. I think <laughs> I need to rent out my RV. What right. you, exactly. Sitting here collecting dust. Oh exactly. my goodness. Exactly. <laughs> Kelly, this is now your podcast. Turn yeah. it over to Kelly. <laughs> <I know. laughs> oh wait, we've got a three, three, threesome here going on. The three of us. We're in our own little party now. So. <laughs> oh, I, 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 I thought about Airbnb being it, but then I thought, well, I don't know if I want that responsibility. So I will definitely be looking at. Outdoorsy, that's fantastic. Yeah, they cover, in terms of liability, they got everything covered. So they check the driver's license, they check the history, they collect the money, they collect the deposit. So everything's done for you. You know, all you have to do is make sure it's clean, show them how to use it, and then, you know, meet them there and pick it up. And that's it. Amazing. (laughs) Very cool. (laughs) Yeah. Yeah, there's all kinds of ways to... To be creative. And, and these are the reasons why you want to hang out with cool people and people that are <laughs> doing, you know, because you get ideas. I mean, I go to conferences all the time uh, with creative investors to just learn, talk to people. What are you doing? How would you get started? But it's also why my show is still running 13 years later, because I do the same thing there. I just want to hear what people are doing. And it will change your life. You get ideas. You know, if you're hanging out with people who are miserable, they work too much and they hate their job and you know that's that's not very inspiring you know yeah, so, yeah no that's, that's exactly absolutely it. not <laughs> i don't i'm still my jaw is still on my kneecaps right now i, I don't know this is, <laughs> why this is, is your jaw because <laughs> i'm enthralled with this conversation i'm like <laughs> sign me up man sign me up <laughs> I'm signing up for Outdoorsy. I'm signing up for the the Real Wealth Show. I don't know. What else can I sign up for here today? <laughs> I'm in. I'm Facebook friends with Kathy now. It's just all coming together in my life. <laughs> oh, well, I've got a great dance class that you can sign up for. Oh, there you go. Hey, <laughs> oh, awesome. my God. <laughs> it is with the lady who does the choreography for Pink. So you have, there's a lot of Oh, movement. hey. Learning, learning things that only an 18 year old should be doing, but you know, us middle I've, class ladies are trying it anyway. <laughs> I've seen Pink's choreography. I don't, I'm not, I'm scared by that. I don't know. It's terrifying. <laughs> terrifying. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> My daughter won't go. She's like, I can't see moms doing this. This is not okay. <laughs> Exactly. <laughs> I took my first aerial silks class and pole dancing class at the rough old age of 43. Awesome. <laughs> Let me tell you, it is nothing like you think it is. I have bruised <laughs> on places I didn't know existed. Yeah, that is hard work. It was very hard. It was nothing like I, it. it looks amazing and easy. Forget it. No, it's not. Did it, it, did it make you money to sign up for that? No, no one would hire me well. at all to do that. I couldn't, I, I couldn't turn myself upside down. I couldn't even pull myself up on the pole. I just couldn't do it. It's bad. No, <laughs> that, that's that's an, exactly that's an exercise, and I'm not worthy right now. <laughs> <laughs> oh man, you know, I know, I think I know some of the answers to this, but Kathy, what's the most badass thing you've ever done? Ooh, let's see. I, I would say, you know, I learned how to surf because oh, cool. I try to keep up with my husband, who's just a, a, you know, he wrote a book called Extreme Success, which is all about <laughs> his extreme, <laughs> his extremes. I mean, he was in the X Games. But anyway, so I learned to surf so I could do something with him. And I actually learned it. And and then there was like 
it's always guys. It's all the guys and me. And there was this day with big waves and I just, you know, I just wanted to show off to all these big surfers. And so I went too, too deep. I went into the part that's all rocks because I don't, I wasn't paying attention. And I, and this wave turned out to be massive. And I was at the top of it. I mean, massive in my mind, you know, probably was not, but it was like um, a two inch wave. Get real. Come on. <laughs> but all of a sudden, like the water pulls back to go up into this wave, you know, it just all sort of retreats and I'm at the top of it and there's nothing below me, but rocks, like no water. And it was like, okay, you're trying to show off in front of all these surfers and you're on the top of this wave. You better stick it because it will not go well. And I did. I just, yeah. I, I surfed this wave. I stayed on. I didn't hurt myself. And this group of like super cool surfer, surfer dudes all were cheering and clapping for me. So yeah, that was badass. <laughs> That, that is was pretty bad. badass. That is <laughs> very badass. On the real estate side, I would say probably <laughs> the most like exciting there is that we got this, uh, we were told, you know, sometimes you got to move quickly on deals. You got to move real quickly. And sometimes you don't have time to research it. Uh, so you got to do it safely, but quickly. And, um, and so somebody brought us this deal where this person kind of was about to get foreclosed on this group of investors on this 800 acres surrounding a college that just hadn't been built out yet. So all the student housing and this little town, I mean, it was all ready to go, but, um, but this person, this group of investors, it took them too long to get their entitlements and their permits. So they ran out of money and, and, uh, they had a hard money loan and were going to get foreclosed on. We had to raise the money in like a week to be able to, to buy them out so we wouldn't get foreclosed on. And we did, we raised $13 million in a couple of days. And, but I also didn't have time to, research this property because we had two days and so we structured it in a way that was a note so that we bought out the note like you know the loan um so that it they couldn't foreclose but then we had an option to buy in like uh, you know three months so we would have time for our due diligence and uh and so that was that was a great deal because the property comes with a 60 million dollar uh appraisal (laughs) and we we we're you know in it for uh much less. So that that's exciting. That was like a, a rock star real estate moment. <laughs> <laughs> that is a rock star real estate is. moment. <laughs> yeah. That's that's a that's a risk. And it, when you said I figured Kelly you were gonna jump in when she said uh we didn't have time to research. She's always jumping my my ass about researching too much. I'm like, you didn't have time to research. I'm out. <laughs> yeah. And sometimes you don't that's the problem with the really good real estate deals. But you know, and, and especially since investors are giving me their hard earned, you know, savings. Right. Um, Kathy, and I'm putting, you're going to love my story in Colorado. All right. I can't wait to hear it. <laughs> this is how I bought my property. This is how this went. So the marijuana industry started in Colorado, right? So my brain goes, where are people going to go? Colorado. I got to get some real estate. Yeah. This is how my brain goes. Yeah. My stepson's in the industry. So we're talking and he goes, let's get a property. Okay. Great. So we go out, we look at, probably 10 properties we bid on two were the 13th or 14th bidder at full price. We didn't even get the property. So the market demand was ridiculous. So I called my agent and I said, what do you have? And she says, okay, let me show you a couple places. Now I'm not even there. I sent my husband to go look at the places who he's got ADD, a purple butterfly comes by and he's forgot the property. He's chasing the purple butterfly. So he's out there looking at the property and as he's looking at it, it's sold. That's how fast it was. So the girl showing him the wow. thing, she says, this property just got sold. So he called me and he's so pissed off. He flew out there from Miami, you know, and he's seen probably 10 places in two days. He's like, none of these places can we get because they sell by the time you go, you know, say yes. So she goes, the funding just got lost on this other property um, that we had, you know, we had almost signed a deal on. He goes, I'll take it. And she goes, you haven't seen it. He goes, I don't care. Put an offer in on it. He calls me. He goes, I just bid on something. And I'm like, you did what? And he goes, I just put an offer in and I haven't seen it. I'm like, okay, did you sign the paperwork? He goes, kind of. And I'm like, oh, okay, great. So I'm sitting there thinking to myself, I just put money on something I haven't seen. So he goes and looks at it and he calls me and he goes, you're going to love it. And I'm like, great. This can't be, this can't be right. And she calls, she goes, how quickly can you escrow us 60 grand? I said, I can do it today. So this is how fast this went. Within a week, we were at the settlement table. And when we 
closed. There were 25 offers, including ours on the table, and we went 40 over asking to get the place. That's how crazy the Colorado market was. Fast forward now, I'm on my third year. My, my price has, has almost doubled of the, of what it's worth. Oh, that's fantastic. And I did it sight unseen. I never saw the property. I just said, here you go. Have you seen it now? Do you know what it looks like now? My stepson's living there. So when I go, I give him a week to prepare when I get there because he's 25 and he's a single bachelor. So I want to make sure it looks decent when I get there. But the answer to that is yes. Okay, good. (laughs) Well, you know, there's technology today. You don't, I mean, I haven't seen half the properties I've bought. I I mean, I shouldn't say that. I usually go, but um, you don't have to because you, you can get an appraisal. You can get an independent inspection. There's, you could, there's so much data online. You can, you know, Google Maps will show you the area. There's lots of research tools so that you don't necessarily have to see it. I still do like to see it because I think property has a feeling to it. But in this case, you know, someone had done that for you and yeah. So it, and, and especially if you just know that an area is about to take off like that. Like I I wish I had thought of that. (laughs) It makes it a lot of sense. Yeah, right. I know. Yeah. I'm I'm sitting here thinking, you know, because I've got kids that are in their 20s and stuff, and even for myself, like, what advice would you give somebody who is just thinking about doing this? Like, what's the first step? What would be the first little nugget of advice for them? Uh, you know, it's like I said, the first thing is to just understand it enough. You don't have to be an expert, you know, 20 years like I have it. You you just need to read some basic books. You don't have to go to those twenty thousand dollar boot camps. There's so much information available. So uh, I mean, I wrote a book called Retire Rich with Rentals. It is super simple. Start with that. It's twenty bucks. Um, you know, to get you know my my twenty years of experience right all all summed up in a book with with checklists. Um, if you're looking to flip, you know, there's, there's lots of books and podcasts on that. So just spend some time understanding. Usually there's local real estate investment groups you can join and get to know people and see different strategies. Be cautious of just calling a local realtor and talking about investment property. Realtors are marketers. That's really mostly what they do. They're good at marketing. And so they will save it. They maybe are great, at, you know, they could find you a good investment property, but unless they own investment property, don't, don't take their advice. <laughs> so, because oftentimes they'll just be selling you a house, but not really understand uh, that, that you're trying to look for a return, whether you're trying to flip it or, uh, you know, do long-term buy and hold. So, but if you're, if you're looking for rental property, probably your greatest resource will be property managers because they can tell you what the rental demand is in, in, in your, in your metro area. Great advice. My Great father advice. is a real estate broker. And when I turned 19, I said, I want to be a psychologist. And he looked at me and he says, you're going to sell real estate. And I said, I don't want to sell real estate. And he goes, <laughs> you're going to learn. And I said, I don't want to sell anything. And this is what he told me. He said, if you can sell anything, you could be a psychologist. And I said, what? And he goes, you're going to have to sell your services. So you need to learn the real estate market. So my father's a huge manager flipper. He's done this his whole life. And when I decided, I took the real estate course, got my license. This is 1993. And he goes, I'll pay for it if you sell one house. It took me seven months to sell the house, first of all, because I hate to sell. And then I got out of it. And he said to me, I'll never teach you any of my real estate secrets because you wouldn't <laughs> stick with it. I'm like, I hate you. So I have to learn on my own through trial and error. And he'll call me and laugh. And he'll be like, how did that go for you? And I'm like, will you just tell me what I need to know? And he goes, nope, got to learn it on your own. So I come from that whole management perspective. And I've watched him do that. And I've watched him by, you know, multiple units, manage and flip, manage and flip. And it's interesting that you say that when you find a real estate agent, they have to be a manager because you're right. If they haven't managed, they don't know what to look for. An actual agent just wants yeah. the commission. Let's move on to the next topic. So it's very interesting. So I'm really excited. I went to your website already. I've already filled out the questionnaire. I'm really excited to do some work with you. Awesome. Yeah. You know, I'm obsessed with learning and I've been doing this so long. You'd think there couldn't possibly be anything else to learn, but I learn every day. There's new tax laws that just happened. And guess what? Our president, love him or hate him, is a real estate investor. So guess what? The tax, the new tax changes really benefit real estate investors in a massive way. 
So, you know, it's just, again, love it or hate it, use it to your benefit. Uh, because they're, you know, you, you have bonus depreciation now, uh, let's say on a, I, I shouldn't get into tax stuff, but people often will buy a primary residence because they want tax deductions. Listen, you're better off renting your primary residence and buying investment property because you can't write off very much for your primary. You can write off everything on your investment property. I'm so, so glad you just said that because that's exactly what I do. I rent in Miami. My investment properties in Colorado. Woohoo. I'm doing it right. Yeah. You're doing right. Yeah. I mean, it, it's crazy. Like it, it just, if you're, again, if you're looking for tax deductions, it, you will be shocked at what you can, you can get to a point where you're paying no tax. So, you know, you just, these are things you need to study and learn and understand because if you're spending 30 to 50% of your income on tax, think about what a big, big, big raise you get. If you can just all of a sudden keep that in your pocket, imagine that. Just because you bought a few things. And, and like you said, you, you can use other people's money. Don't let lack of money hold you back. I, I started with no money. It's just, you have to be aware of opportunity. I, I have, if you listen to my show, you'll see I, I have, I bring in a lot of kids, like 20, I call them kids, but they're like in their twenties, 21. And these, they don't have any money. They, what they have is the ability to learn quickly and the, and drive. Not all of them, some of them. <laughs> um, <laughs> But I, I mean, I, got, I had one kid on my show who has been flipping land that, you know, he he buys for a couple thousand dollars and flips it for, you know, a couple more. But he's done 30 in the last year. So, again, that's just a kind of a special little niche that he found. But he's in Florida and and I don't I don't know. It's working for him. And, and he's got mentors showing him how. So, you know, just don't. My my recommendation is don't jump into anything you don't understand. Don't do it. The biggest mistakes I've ever made and the most money I have lost is from jumping into things I didn't understand or thought I understood or trusted somebody else that I thought they understood. Um, you've got to know the basics. It's kind of like, I don't know if you've ever traveled internationally, but my family went to Costa Rica a couple of years ago and we didn't stop to take the time to understand the money. <laughs> we didn't know the exchange rate. And so the very first place we went, we bought a couple of pastries and I think we paid 40 bucks for them because we didn't know, we, we, you know, we were the dumb Americans that didn't know how to count the change. Mm-hmm. And I think when we left, they were just all laughing. <laughs> <laughs> you don't want to be that person. You've got to know the basics, you know, know the basics so you could protect yourself. Well, thank you so much for coming on. We are out of time. This has been absolutely fun and informative. It's and- been great. Yep. I'm looking forward to doing some more work with you. So tell our listeners how they can find you. Sure. It's Real Wealth Network, real like real estate, wealth like your money, and network as the network of uh, companies that we have found nationwide who help people, you know, find these properties, get them all renovated, find it, they find a tenant and they offer the ongoing management. So it's, it's kind of like a turnkey investment property. We have teams all across the country that help you do that. So it's realwealthnetwork.com. Awesome. Well, thank you again for coming on. It's been absolutely fabulous. And I am looking thank forward you. to making some passive income. And I'm sure Dr. Terror is over there running numbers in her head and figuring out what she's going to do. <laughs> I'm joining newsletters. I'm sending Facebook requests. I'm all of it. <laughs> You are an amazing multitasker. I am. <laughs> you Thanks think so I'm much. joking, but I'm not. <laughs> <laughs> well, hopefully we'll get to see you at one of our upcoming events. That will be fun. Awesome. Great. Right. Thank you so much. <laughs> thank you. Well, thank you, everybody. You're listening to Unpause Your Life with Dr. Cali Estes and my co-host, Dr. Tara Lonsell. Hey everyone, thanks again for listening. I really hope you enjoyed the show today. Head on over to iTunes and Apple Podcasts and leave a comment or review of what you think. Or contact us at 1-800-706-0318. If you want to be on our show, feel free to email or call. And if you have a topic, feel free to email or call as well. Thanks for listening to Unpause Your Life. For show notes and more, head on over to unpauseyourlife.com. Big shout out to recoveryinnovators.com for help producing this show. Thank you, guys. I took a walk down the long road Where they said that I shouldn't go On my way found a reason 
to wake up another day But they needed to show you All of the things that you won't do Find faith or religion But nothing to show for Nothing 